I was rather shocked to discover that hydroquinone is actually illegal in the United States as an over-the-counter product. I did not know that. I still see hydroquinone splashed all over social media and the internet. Hydroquinone helps lighten discolorations in our skin. Apparently, it's also a carcinogen. I'd rather not have that in my body. So what is our alternative? Thank goodness there is something called niacinamide. It is a naturally occurring ingredient, and that is what we're going to talk about today. I'm Michelle Fox from Michelle Fox Beauty and Michelle Fox Online, and we are in the middle of a four-part series discussing very powerful serums known as boosters, things that you add to your skincare regimen that are targeted solutions as opposed to products in the past that were multi-purpose products. You may see them listed as ingredients in your moisturizer or your night cream, but to really reap the benefits, you want to in include it in your skincare regimen as a serum where it's more um, more in intense, where it's more potent, where it's that is the only ingredient or there might be one or two other ingredients, but where it can really do its thing. OK, hydroquinone was ha has been around forever. It is a skin lightening agent. And I mean, gosh. I've used it. I've sold it. I had no idea that it was considered a carcinogen. Bad, you know, my bad. <laughs> now that I know, um, I am so happy to know that niacinamide is an option. So here's the deal. Whereas hydroquinone was attacking it in the sense that it was um, preventing an enzyme from producing melanin in our skin. And apparently this is something not found in nature. Niacinamide is something that is found in nature. It is actually part of us. It is a B3 uh, vitamin, but it is also found in fish, meat, uh, eggs, green, uh, green vegetables, cereal. Um, and so we are able to take this natural ingredient, this natural element, and use its benefits. The, the way it is used in our body is to help us effectively utilize fat and sugar in our body. And it is also an anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant, which protects us from free radicals in the environment. Okay, so let's put that all together. So niacinamide is different in the sense that it is something naturally occurring and since it is an anti-inflammatory, it's not going to have the issues that hydroquinone had because that was a very aggressive product and ingredient. It did cause dry skin and rashes and irritation and redness. And you had to have a certain skin type in order to be able to use it. So we don't have to worry about that now with the niacinamide. Niacinamide is much gentler, yet it is still very effective. It attacks things differently instead of preventing the production of melanin, it is uh, fighting the free radicals in our environment, which are the different um, things in the environment that cause us to age, also cause cancer. So it is fighting that. Niacinamide works from within. It is stimulating the collagen production and also cell turnover. So we are having our, our fresh skin exposed more quickly. Niacinamide can be used daily. It can be used on and on, whereas hydroquinone, you could only use it for a certain period of time. Now we know why. Uh, and since it is an anti-inflammatory, it is you're not going to have all of the problems that you had previously with irritation and such. It's going to be quite the opposite, where it's going to be somewhat of a soothing experience. It is safe for sensitive skin. Niacinamide brightens our skin and it is particularly ben beneficial when it is combined with ferulic acid, which we actually mentioned that last week. Ferulic acid is also great when it's combined with resveratrol. So we're, we're seeing some common themes here. You can combine niacinamide with hyaluronic acid. That was week one. We talked about how hyaluronic acid hydrates and also holds our moisture in and that it is a great um, body to combine with other serums. And niacinamide is one that you can combine 
with your hyaluronic acid, all these big words. <laughs> can it be used with retinol? Yes, it can. But uh, again, retinol is such a powerful ingredient, such a powerful product that you want to make sure that your skin has acclimated to the retinol before you introduce yet another powerful ingredient and you would use it on alternate days. So you would use your niacinamide on alternate days from the retinol after your skin has acclimated to the retinol. So if you have issues with dark spots, discoloration, hyperpigmentation, you want a way to uh, even out your skin tone, brighten your skin tone, niacinamide is the new latest and greatest, significantly safer choice than the previous option, which was hydroquinone. So I have seen several before and after pictures. I'll throw a few of them on the screen and nothing, you know, a picture says a thousand words or whatever. How's it go? <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, all of these pictures that I have seen, I've had friends send them to me, colleagues, and I have been very, very impressed because I was concerned that the niacinamide might not be as effective, not as strong as the previous hydroquinone. But the results to me speak for themselves. I think that niacinamide definitely holds its own. And now that I know what I know, I am no longer interested in pursuing hydroquinone products. I will focus instead on niacinamide, something that is found in nature. It is a B3 vitamin. It is helping cell turnover. It is producing, stimulating the production of collagen. Collagen is a good thing. We want to keep it going as long as possible all good things and it is brightening our skin it is not a, a bleaching it's not a lightening agent it is producing clearer skin from an internal level working at the cellular level in a much healthier manner than what we had as an option in the past so if you have discoloration age spots hyperpigmentation i would strongly suggest that you try niacinamide it is usually um, administered in a dropper something like this it's a little bit thicker than uh, some of the serums that i've seen but not quite as thick as the hyaluronic acid so so far every serum has had kind of its own feel to it but it can be combined with hyaluronic acid and that's something I like to decide what my issues are, decide the products that I need. But then if there's a way that I can put them all together in one simple step, I got to say, I like that. <laughs> I like to economize my time. So that this is something that I'm really excited about because I definitely am having issues with age spots, sunspots, whatever you want to call them. Niacinamide is the answer. And I would love to hear if you have tried it and what your thoughts are on it. I, I think my the thing that I love most is that it is not going to cause the itchiness, the irritation, the redness that hydroquinone was known for. And the other thing that hydroquinone, depending on uh, how it was made, like who, what company made it, sometimes it could cause kind of this, um, like a, a ghost effect or I, what, like a halo effect. So like if you put it on a dark patch, and you got it outside of that dark patch, it would make the area outside the dark patch really, really light. And so it was almost like it was highlighting the dark patch. So it was complicated. It was just kind of a tricky thing to work with. But now I'm not worrying about that anymore. There's a new, new latest and greatest. It's niacinamide. I'm excited. So if you think you're going to try it, if you have tried it, let us know in the comments. If you got anything out of this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who might enjoy it as well, and subscribe to my channel. I will have some freebies for you in my blog. So you want to go back and read the blog and click anywhere it says to click here because I've got free offers. I've got suggestions for products and all kinds of fun stuff. So I appreciate your time and attention. This was video number three. If you haven't seen the first two, go back and watch them. And next week is our last week. And then I'm going to let you know which of the four, if I had to choose one, what would it be? Are you so curious? I haven't even decided yet. <laughs>
I want to give them all plenty of time on air and in my life so that before I make that determination. But our final week is on PHA and AHA. All of these letters, alphabet soup. What is all this stuff? What does this mean? How do, how can I keep track of it? We're going to talk about it and we're going to figure that all out next week. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.